What's going on everyone? This is Jeff with another unboxing video and it's been a few months since I did my last one so I've got these on pre-order and they finally showed up so let's see what we got here. I got these models from Collectible Jets in Massachusetts which is where I get a lot of my models from. And we've got two in here, so we'll see which one comes first. And there she is, a JC Wings model. Oh, excuse me, in-flight models right there. In-flight models, that's uh, Boeing 747-400, the Air New Zealand. This is... Uh, one that I, I haven't flown on the 747-400 with Air New Zealand, but uh, I have seen them a number of times when I've been traveling through LAX. And it's nice to be able to get these models because the 747s all being retired means that uh, we're just never going to see them again. So I'd like to pick up as many of these models as I can while I'm in the process. So let's check it out. Nothing particularly exciting with this box, as you can see. Sometimes in-flight does something special, but uh, not always. And there she is. 747, just such a classic aircraft. And this is the newer releases, so we're now we're having the coins in our packages as well, which is really kind of nice feature. Pretty slick. Final revenue flight, September 12th, 2014. And we've got our metal stand. And of course we've got our metal plate there, which is something that JC Wings have kind of been dropping off on doing, but in flight have been staying true to that, which is a really nice feature. So get this out of the box here. And this one has, does not have the removable gear. So that's interesting. I think it's probably just, it's an older release of the 400, but yeah, we have the fixed gear. In-flight used to have the fixed gear. And uh, actually these don't even tilt, interesting. A lot of the in-flights do tilt, but uh, not on these ones, but we've got a lot of detail there on the rest of the aircraft. Let's point this forward. We do have some very small jewel lights there in the nose gear, but not like we see on some of the other models. So let's have a look here. We've got our cockpit windows and our Star Alliance membership, which of course, KL, our Air New Zealand is a member of the Star Alliance. We've got our cockpit escape window, our pedo tubes, and lighting. These are typically going to be lights. And then our windows there. This aircraft is named Christchurch, of course, which is a city in New Zealand. We got the L1 door, lots of nice detail there. Another light, and then we have our numerous static ports. The upper deck windows. The beautiful Air New Zealand titles there. Always very, very noticeable. I do have the uh, 777-300ER, the All Blacks livery, and that's a great model to have too. If you haven't got that one, it's worth picking up if uh, you can ever find one, but I don't think they're going to be available any, ever again, unless they come out on a re-release. 
I got the L3 door, the L4 door, the L5 door, of course the flag carrier of New Zealand, Air New Zealand is, it's a Boeing 747-400. This course registration is Zulu, Kilo, November, Bravo, Victor. And we've got our horizontal stabilizer with tail illumination lights. Some 3D modeling there of the elevator, but it's kind of hard to see. And 3D modeling of the rudder as well. You can just see that there, nice. Then we have the APU exhaust hole and the strobe light that's back here. The nose gear, the nose gear doors, VHF antenna, just nicely painted. And we got our knock -a ducts and the forward drain for the AC packs. These are the vents for the AC packs and these are really 3D modeled very well. You can really sort of see a lot of detail there, which is really nice. We have the wing gear doors and the body gear doors. These are all modeled in 3D as well. So they actually have grooves there. You can kind of identify exactly where they're at. You have the hole for the exhaust, another VHF antenna, and another drain, another drain here. Let's have a look at the side here. And I just pushed this antenna a little bit out of position, so I'll have to fix that. Hopefully it won't fall out. On the starboard side of the aircraft, we have the Christchurch again pitot tubes and the R1 door. We have the LD3 loading unit door here, the uh, cargo hold door. And we see some nice de detailing of the uh, mechanisms here, but uh, there's no, obviously no wording there. Typically there would be wording there that we would see. We see our static ports again, the R2 door, and then we have the little illumination light there again. And we'll work our way back down here to the aft section. And we've got the rear loading door for the cargo hold. And then we have hold number five here, which is for your larger bulky items that don't fit inside a, a cargo loading unit. So this will be for your push chairs, your maybe your golf clubs or your pets if you have some. The 747-400. Got our registration there, of course another illumination light and then we've got our pressure relief valves here on the bottom of the aircraft and then on the top of the aircraft we have the anti-collision beacon we have numerous antennas including there'll be an air traffic control antenna traffic collision avoidance system antennas distance measuring equipment antennas we have the auto direction finder antennas, which are always paired. You see them right here, and these are in 3D, so they're raised up. Let's see if we can kind of show that there. We've got another VHF or UHF antenna here. And then we work our way back to that beautiful tail, and it's really nice how they did that blend from the kind of the blue to the blue green there. It's really nice. This is the, the square here is the intake for the auxiliary power unit. This would open to allow air to come in and be combusted. Let's have a look at the wings here. <clears throat> of course, the 747-400 has the uh, wingtip device. And we've got our Krieger slats, not very well stylized here in the 3D but we get the effect. And then we've got our slats and our 
spoilers, ailerons, the flapper on here, which is the control uh, control surface here used in conjunction with the ailerons. And likewise on this side too. Spoilers, flaps. This uses a triple slotted Fowler flap, so it has three components to it. And then we have our flapper on again. And this uses the GE CF6, or excuse me, the CF6 engines. Got our flap track fairings. And these are all one continuous piece. So some of the models, the flap track fairing is a loose piece, particularly on the flaps down models. And we have our registration again, Zulo Kilo, November, Bravo, Victor. And on the underside, we can see our aileron mechanism there. You can see the actual hinge points. And this little triangle here is a uh, fuel tank vent uh, so that you can, as pressure changes in the fuel tanks, that can be uh, uh, released through that little vent there. And there's another one on the starboard side as well. Of course, we got our anti-collision beacon there too. We have our landing lights here in the wings. These aren't jewels, they're just painted on. We have our green position light here. And then of course the matching red one on the port side. Now this is so that the um, other aircraft traveling around the airfield can determine whether the aircraft is approaching them or moving away from them. So it's important to be able to have some kind of method to distinguish that. And then on the aft side of the wing, there would be a white light here. So you know that if you see the white lights that the aircraft is moving away from you. This model without the gear is a little less, uh, without the removable gear is a little less interactive than some of the other models that we have out there in the Bafers. Let's check this out and see if we can make these fans spin. Usually the in-flight uh, engines don't turn, but uh, we'll see what happens. So let's go into a little bit of history of Air New Zealand. And now this particular model is uh, in-flight 200. It's in-flight 744ZK1121, which I said was purchased from Collectible Jets. And uh, it's Boeing 747419. So the 19 is the customer code for Air New Zealand. Serial number on this aircraft, the actual aircraft is 26910. And the line number was 1180. This aircraft was retired from the fleet September 14th after its last flight from San Francisco to Auckland, New Zealand. And it was the last 747 in their fleet. It was returned to the lesser in 12 of 2020. And then after Air New Zealand flew with uh, Wamos, Saudi Arabian, Wamos again, El Al, Air France, Wamos, Latam in Chile, Garuda, Indonesia, and Wamos again. So this as aircraft is changed a number of hands since it was retired in 2014. Its first flight was in October 9th, 1998 and delivered to Air New Zealand on October 31st, 1998. Engines of the GCF 680C2B1S and the seating configuration on this aircraft was 
business class, 33 seats and 430 seats in economy for a total of 466, so pretty well laden aircraft. Length on the actual aircraft is 230 feet, 10 inches. The wingspan, 211 feet, five inches. The width, 19 feet, 11 inches. I mean, just a huge aircraft. The height, 63 inches, six, excuse me, 63 feet, eight inches. Maximum takeoff weight, 602,000 pounds. Although I don't think that's correct. I think it's actually maybe a quite a bit higher than that. The range on it was uh, 7,285 to 7,670 nautical miles. Maximum fuel weight, 63,705 7, 63, gallons, which is just uh, an, unbelie an unbelievable quantity of fuel. Engine max thrust, 63,600 pounds. And the engine fan diameter on these, 93 inches. So that's almost eight feet. Just hard to imagine how big these engines really are. So Air New Zealand, flag carrier of, the, uh, uh, of New Zealand and based in Auckland. They have 20 domestic and 31 international destinations in 18 countries. They've been a Star Alliance member since 1999. They originated in 1940 as Tasman Empire Airways Limited, a company operating cargo and passenger flights between New Zealand and Australia. Shareholders included Union Airways of New Zealand, the New Zealand government, Qantas, and BOAC. In 1965, TEAL, so Tasman Empire Airways Limited, became owned by the New Zealand government and was named Air New Zealand. It used to be all international until 1978 when it was merged with New Zealand National Airways Corporation under the Air New Zealand name. And in 1989, it was privatized and then returned to government ownership, majority ownership in 2001. So it's kind of traded hands in terms of, is it part government owned or is it a state owned run airline so currently that is the case they have their hub is in Auckland and it's headquartered in the hub which is a structure and they operate a total of uh, operate 20 aircraft of the A320 variety 11 A321s 7 777 300ERs 14 787 9s as well as an extensive turbotrop fleet of aircraft of course obviously not flying the 747 anymore um, they added the DC-8 enabling Trans-Pacific flights and in 1965 began service to the U.S. and Asia with L.A. and Honolulu added as destinations. And then in 1981 added the 747 and began flights to London via L.A. a year later. A total of five 747-200s, which is their original part of the fleet. They added the 767 in 1985 to replace the DC-10 and the DC-8s, and uh, also tried to acquire Ansett Australia, which is another uh, Australian airline in 2000, and uh, that didn't work out. So this liberal is the Mary Koru symbol, it's a kite, stylized representation of a, of a silver fern unfolding. In 2012, it dropped the teal and green colors, carried over from Teal Airways, and also the airline uh, switch then to the standard livery that we see today uh, and also this airline uh, this airliner this particular 747 here has previously carried like, carried the lord of the rings livery so some of you may have that model as well i know that's out there and um it's also kind of of uh, an interesting livery to get um i think also that this aircraft may have had a previous livery on it before that but uh, i'm not totally sure of that if anyone knows that information please let me know so this is obviously our 747-400. Gorgeous aircraft. These models just really convey the beauty of the 747 and what a wonderful aircraft it is. I'm going to be flying here in another week or so, and I'll be flying on the 747-8 with Lufthansa. And uh, it's going to be good to get back in the skies and get back on a wide body again. I already have a model of the 747-400, the Soxon, which is... One of my most viewed models of all, and uh, this one is sure to not disappoint like those other ones. So please let me know if you've got this model, if you plan on getting it. Obviously, these are becoming far and few between. This one was a uh, pre-order, so uh, I'm sure it's already sold out as it is. But yes, a wonderful model and a great addition to the collection. And glad to be able to have her on site here. So let's go ahead and put the stand on and see how she sits. Sometimes it's a little hit or miss as to whether the stand's gonna
pulled the aircraft nice and straight, but uh, as you can see, this one does a fine job of that. And I always put my models on the stand whenever I can, especially if they have the plate on them because they just add so much more interest. And that's kind of just another great feature of these aircraft models. So again, if you're not subscribed, please hit that button below, hit that like button, help support my channel, make it grow. I have more models I wanna get. I've got another uh, 747 I gotta unbox. And then we've got a string of those uh, all Nippon Airways Star Wars liveries coming up soon. So stay tuned for those. And thanks again, and thanks a lot for watching.